You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Is Evolve Wellness with your host, Dr. Nikki Herrings. Life Mastery Consultant Dr. Herrings will offer alternative wellness tools and perspectives that, when willing, can allow the challenges we face to become the mechanism that helps us grow. Evolve Wellness offers hope, empowerment, inspiration, and a strong sense of community. So please welcome the host of Evolve Wellness, Dr. Nikki Herrings. Welcome. I'm Dr. Nikki Herrings. You're listening to Evolve Wellness, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And it is my honor to introduce our guest today, Patricia Yake. And she shares her journey here. She says it was at her lowest point in life when struggling social worker Patricia Yake bravely used her feelings of frustration, futility, and fear as a catalyst for change, embarking upon her own journey to enlightened self-fulfillment. Now a certified life mastery consultant, workshop leader, and inspirational speaker, Patricia's coaching practice, Innate Wisdom, uses proven success strategies to help others overcome their own limitations on every level so that they too can create the vibrant, abundant, joyous life that we all deserve. And to change the without, you must first go within. Patricia has also said that what she says, and I quote, what I have learned about my cancer journey is that it is just part of the journey that assisted me to grow. It taught me lessons on how to respect my body and to let go of things that no longer served me. The power of our mind to assist in our healing. The cancer journey is just part of our journey. It does not have to define us. I love that. And thank you so much for joining me here today and sharing your story, Patricia. Thank you. I'm just, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So we met this past September at the Life Mastery Institute coach training, and it was actually my first training back after just completing my treatment. And I had gotten my pick line out just a few days prior. So I was so eager to get back into the world. And and the morning of our training, it, uh, we were both volunteering. And I don't even recall how it happened, but you ended up joining me for breakfast. And it was just such a refreshing step back into this and into the community and community of support. And you shared some of your story with me as well. And you just really held space for me in such a beautiful way. And I'm so grateful to you and the Life Mastery Institute family and to to meet a partner in believing you like you. So thank you again. (laughs) You're welcome. And just for a little context, can you share some of your cancer journey here with us? Okay. Yeah, I can. Um, I had a can, my cancer journey was nine years ago and I had, was living my life and, um, just noticed that I was getting really tired and, um, unbeknownst to me, I was not well. However, um, I just really listened to my, um, innate wisdom or the still small voice and I had, um, this idea that I started needed to do healing meditations. And I just started doing healing meditations and green light healing meditations and um, started exercising again and, and changed jobs actually because I felt that I didn't have enough energy to do the job that I had been doing. And I stepped into another position. And then um, one Sunday morning I woke up and I had a huge... Um, clawed on the side of my stool um, 
and I went, oh no, something's wrong. And um, I really kind of ignored it. But a couple of days later, um, I um, had the experience of having um, a large bowl full of blood and I knew that I needed to go to the hospital. And I know that some people don't want to take a look at their stools, but you know what? You should because it could save your life. And that night I went and I was very grateful um, to the staff at the hospital because they asked me how long I'd had symptoms and I said for two days. But I said, you know what? I know something's wrong with me. And they kept me and then the next morning I was able to have a colonoscopy and they found uh, they found the tumor in my colon. Um, and I was able to have surgery within three weeks and um, and it was really a blessing because everything kind of uh, came together quite quickly and we had just caught it in time. It had just started moving into my lymph system and it was in one lymph node around the colon um, and from there I ended up having um, six months of chemotherapy. Um, and during my journey, um, I was using complementary um, medicine as well, like meditations and um, visualizations of of looking at um, the cancer being killed and seeing it out of my body um, and just really um, taking time off and, and connecting with um, a cancer care program that's in Calgary. And they... Um, had yoga and did a lot of complimentary stuff. And my belief is, is that you really should use um, Western medicine and complement it with Eastern medicine. Um, okay. And today I'm still cancer free and um, just loving my life. I love it. That's beautiful. And thank you for sharing your story. It's um I, my wish is always that it's empowering for people to to put it out there and in turn it will certainly empower other people and maybe give them the courage to advocate for themselves and I loved what you had shared in your bio about you know what you had learned about your your journey and mm-hmm. and how it it doesn't have to define us and um, I know for me I've had a little resistance to the label survivor in for some reason and I think it might just being labeled that way because I'm I'm, I'm resistant to, to having that define me on some level so what is your perspective on that okay well I, I understand Nikki how you feel um, because I think that um, it is part of our process and our healing that you know I, when we just first come out of the journey we talk about it a lot and you know what I was even um I was even upset with myself too and resistant about sharing, but I think that it was just subconsciously like I needed to share. And now, you know, um, nine years out, um, I don't share it anymore. Um, People are shocked when I say that I'm a cancer survivor because I think it's just a process of healing um, Mm -hmm. and that, that you can release it. And I know one of, um, we also had counseling during our, our our cancer journeys, and I remember saying to the counselor, saying, you know, like, I am so afraid that this is going to define me. I'm so afraid that it's going to come back. And the only words of advice that she could give to me was, you need to shift out of that because, you know, you can get trapped in that. And um, so I think some of the advice that I would give um, people is that, um, when you, if you're, for, if you're fortunate enough just to have, you know, the surgery and your cancer is encapsulated and it's in one spot and they just take it out, you know, six weeks and then you're on your road. But if you have a journey of further treatment, that whenever you're feeling the best, like feeling better and you're not, you know, um, caught up in, in the tiredness of the treatment and you're feeling okay, to live your life as normal as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, on my journey, I had six months of chemo, and but every other weekend I felt okay. And I would go out and I would socialize with friends. I would have friend, friends mm-hmm. over for dinner and just enjoy my life as much as possible. 
I love that. I think that's perfect advice. And we're going to come right back and learn more about Patricia and all the beautiful things she has to offer. Uh, My name is Dr. Nikki Herrings. I'm your host. You're listening to Evolve Wellness, and we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at L'École des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Nikki Herrings. You're listening to Evolve Wellness, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we're here with our guest, Patricia Yake. And if we have anybody out there who has any questions and you want to call in or add to the conversation, feel free. Our number is 866 451 1451. And Patricia, thank you again for being here and sharing your story. I'm curious for you, I think it's so different for everybody, but what did you find most helpful in terms of support? And this can be from the medical community, friends, family. Okay, um, I'd like to start with the medical community in the fact that, you know, if if you believe that there's something, you know, something wrong with you, um, I think that getting to the doctor and really being your own advocate um, is really important um, through this journey. Um, and uh, sharing with your doctor what is happening for you. I know that in one of my chemo, um, one of my trips to the doctor after chemo, I said, you know, I have got so much chemo in me, I can taste it. And he said to me, he says, you can't taste it. And I said, yes, I can. And then he took a look down my throat and he said, <laughs> he said, if we don't lower this dose, she'll be in the hospital. So what I found on my journey was to really listen to myself and trust myself in knowing what is best for you. Um, And you know what? If you believe that there's something wrong with you, getting yourself to a medical professional and just saying, you know, something's wrong, I don't know, could you please test for it? Um, and, And then things will kind of fall into place. And in, in Calgary, um, there are different supports, like, um, and we were allowed to have a counselor and going to that counselor and taking advantage of, of every opportunity. Um, and if you don't have someone that you can reach out to, finding a coach or a therapist, someone that you can go and talk to about it. Um, and also, um, I found that I got great support, um, from family and friends. Um, around the diagnosis, but as you know, the, as the the um, journey continued over six months, you know, people started dropping off, and I think that you know, even then, being a, vo- a voice for yourself. And I know that one weekend, I I tried, 
I tried to be strong and do it by myself through the chemo. And there was one weekend where I just knew that if I didn't have people around me, I was going to, you know, really fall into a depression. So it is really important to really ask for what you need. And I even had to reach out to my ex-husband because I couldn't find anybody else. And I said, you don't even have to talk to me. I just need someone in this condo um, just so I know that there's another human with me. And um, people, you're actually, to tell you the truth, you're helping people you're helping people deal with your situation by giving them things to do because most people really want to help you the best way they can. And I, it was suggested to me um, that you set up a team of people, people that you could drive you somewhere, people that could talk, that could cook, and people that could just have conversations of, um, with you because not everybody's good at everything and you just select a team and have a team of people to support you. And I found that very, very helpful. I love um, that. Me, yeah. And then also reaching out to complementary medicine. Um, I know that there's a lot of people out there that think that, you know, um, changing your diet, um, you know, anything that is going to support, you know, you getting better. And also, um, I have to share that, you know, I didn't really even change my food um, during that journey. Um, I still came out of, um, out of, you know, my cancer journey was still quite a bit of weight on. And all of a sudden one day, you know, I realized that I had been given a second chance and I needed to start taking control of my life. And I now no longer eat sh- flour and sugar. Um, I released hundred pounds and I am like off all of my medication. Um, Mm -hmm. So you can really do a lot of things to um, continue a healthy journey. And another thing that I wanted to share was um, that your cancer journey really doesn't have to define you. Um, It is just part of your story. And if you really go to um, spiritual practices or the flow of energy, cancer just means that there's a block, Mm -hmm. um, a block in your system. And that if you really are, you know, letting go of a lot of things and um, you won't have those blocks in your body. And um, so, you know, it's really important, you know, to get a a coach and support um, and start dealing with some of the issues that may have taking you to that point in your story where you were sick okay mm-hmm. and also really acknowledging what you're not happy about in your life because the, the all of that energy gets stuck um and it can cause disease as um as life mastery consultants um dr nikki and i teach people about this that you know if you're listening to yourself and you're listening to your still small voice and really honoring where you're at in your life, in your relationships, in your health and wellness, in your career, in your time and money freedom, we want you to to take a look at all those longings and discontents before you have a great big blowout in your life, like cancer, a divorce, um, you lose your job. Um, So it's really important to, it's a constant, it's a constant flow of energy in and out, breath, listening to yourself. And to tell you the truth, if you're listening to your longings and discontents, you will you have your own answers. Mm-hmm. Um, and also asking the right questions. Why, what, what can I do to make myself happier? What action can I take to move my life forward? What action can I take to keep myself healthy? And mm-hmm. um, really um, taking responsibility for our own life and our own health and everything in our life. Um, I think a lot of us, I know for myself, um, up until the cancer journey and really up until really recently, I thought that, you know, everything outside of me was going to make my life. And really, we have all of our own answers um, and we can we can prevent a lot of, of illness and destruction in our lives by just listening and asking the right questions. 
Absolutely. We always have these these stories from society and the stories we tell ourselves and these agreements that we have to release to really listen to that voice because that is the rudder of our ship. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this when we come back. I'm your host, Dr. Nikki Herrings. You're listening to Evolve Wellness and we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stick around. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Ouvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Author, radio show host, and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins, My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Nikki Herrings. You're listening to Evolve Wellness, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we're here with our our guest today, Patricia Yake, and she just shared some really powerful tools on how to listen to that still small voice. And uh, one thing I wanted to add to that even is is what something I heard recently. I wish I could remember who said it, but but to ask if I loved myself unconditionally, what decision would I make when we're faced with a decision? And I that really landed in a landed for me. And so Patricia, I'm I'm curious, you know, is there anything else that you wanted to kind of elaborate on there and I'm I'm really curious, you know, how this journey changed you to get you from where you were before your journey to just being so empowered with all of these tools. Well, I think it did take a little while um after my cancer journey. Um I probably um it was about four or five years out where all of a sudden I just went, I was sitting in a job that I really wasn't happy with anymore. And I sat there and I just went, I am praying too small. And it was almost like the heavens, the heavens opened up and said, you are playing too small. And I made this realization that I would, I had um, been playing. I, I had been given a second chance. And so I just really started um, reflecting on my life. My children um, were raised and out on their own and um, a job that I really wasn't um, being fulfilled anymore. And I thought, you know what, I can add more to people's lives by teaching, by helping them, um, you know, listen, learn how to listen to that still small voice and to create a life that they would love living because I wanted to create a life that I love living. And it really wasn't that there was a lot wrong. It's just that I just felt kind of stuck. And mm-hmm. it was interesting because I think if I had to talk to my friends about it, they would have said, well, your life looks really great from the outside. But you know what? It was about how I was feeling inside. And I was having longings and discontents about how I was um about how I was living and how I was feeling. And it was true. I'd be given a second chance. 
So I just stepped into some, you know, some personal development, which really helped with my self-esteem. And um, I found um, the Life Mastery Institute and just really stepped into um, being able to teach and coach people the principles that really I had used intuitively on my cancer journey about listening to this still small voice and um, knowing that it was energy and um, just really um, wanting to, to share it with people. And I think that, you know, when you're on a cancer journey, um, I think it's really important to just know that that is just part of your story and it doesn't, it does it doesn't stop there. So what you can say to yourself is, you know, the story that I've been living up until now has brought me to this point, right? So mm-hmm. what changes and what vision can I have for myself from this point forward? And, you know, if you're, if you're looking at, you know, going um, for surgery or treatment, I would love for you to take a, a little bit of time and just vision your life three years from now when it's all, when it's all passed and you're healthy and well, and what would you be doing? Who would you be with? Um, what would your job be? Um, what would make you happy three years from now? And every time you're feeling, you know, taken down by, you know, what are you experiencing right now with your journey, think about the future and believe in the future and ask that person in the future what you need to do to get yourself through this and your mm-hmm. answers will come. And, you know, it's really getting support as well. And um, because not everybody understands the journey. Um, Mm -hmm. It's almost like we're all kindred spirits when we've been through that journey. Mm -hmm. And um, especially when you've, you know, you've done radiation or you've done chemo. um, There's only the people that really have been through it that really understand. Um, So really reach out, ask for what you need and ask for help. Um, which is really important. Um, And yeah, just to create a vision and just know that you're going to get through this. And, um, and also even a vision for how you want to see your the rest of your life. And, you know, God forbid, if you get, you know, a negative diagnosis, creating a vision for, how you would like the rest of your life to be and how you would like your relationships to be. Um, and what things would you like to do that are on your bucket list that you haven't yet done? Everything is created twice. It begins in our mind and then it can manifest in our reality. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, Nikki, if you have you know any more questions or Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, But yeah, just, I mean, even just to add to that, you know, Mm -hmm. um, the kindred spirit thing, I think it it is, it's so true. And I think that's what brought you to my table that morning. Because I, you know, you're once you're in it, you're Googling and trying to figure out like, okay, when do I get my taste back? What is this like? You know, different things and, and just ha- having you show up in that moment helped kind of normalize what I was going through in that moment. And was, I just felt so supported just, just having that. And, and you gave me hope that, okay, look at how far she's come and, and she's living this great life. And, and you, you just had this light about you, you know? And, yeah. and so it is so important to find the people that are going through it because we're not meant to go it alone. And, no. you know, and I think just having a support, having a partner and believing, having a coach, those that can be some of the most supportive tools. And, you know, were there any other tools besides um, leaning into the coaching or anything that you really found supportive, maybe any particular books or whether it had to do with cancer or not? Um, Is there anything that comes to mind that that was really supportive? Actually, um, um, reading Bernie Segal's book, and I can't remember the name of it, but he um, was a doctor that dealt with Mm -hmm. um, a a lot of cancer patients. 
Yeah, I've talked about him quite a bit. It's love, medicine, and miracles. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so we'll, we're going to come right back with Patricia Yake. I'm your host, Dr. Nikki Herrings. This is Evolve Wellness, and we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be back. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Nikki Herrings. You're listening to Evolve Wellness, and we're live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we're here with my our special guest, Patricia Yake, and fellow Life Mastery Consultant. And um, she's also been through this this cancer journey. And um, I'm curious, what what would you recommend for somebody on a similar journey? And maybe even for someone who's uncertain about the outcome. Okay. Um, what I would like to say is, um, if possible, um, I now n- no longer eat sugar and flour, and it's really helped a lot with my health. I feel really good. Um, and the big thing is support. Um And also, you know, when you're going through it, I think that really just sharing um, with people, like I know when I met Nikki, um, I just kind of walked up to her. I figured that she was, uh, you know, there for training and I sat down and the next thing I knew, you know, we were both, you know, had had a cancer journey. So that just goes to show that spirit will bring the people that we need into our life um, if we... um, if we just kind of live our life. And um, I think also um, doing things afraid Mm -hmm. um, because fear is our friend. Um, Fear um, just means that we haven't done it yet. So um, if there's a support group or something that you could go to, but you're afraid Um, I would step into it anyways, because, you know, how often have we been afraid to do things and we actually step in and do it, and then we think, oh, man, that really wasn't that bad. And it just makes us feel really good. And what I would love to, uh, to say to people, too, is to really start talking to, to people, to your friends, to your family, sharing with them how you, how you love them, and really stepping into forgiveness. Because forgiveness really isn't for the people person that we are forgiving. It's for, the, it's for us. Mm-hmm. Because um, we, are holding, um, we are holding ourselves prisoner by a situation that the other person probably is not even thinking about anymore. 
<laughs> so forgiveness, forgiveness is for you. And it's all part of the healing journey. Um, you know, discontent be, can be caused by um, a lot of, of unforgiveness and hard feelings and just really um, releasing all of that because a lot of those energy blocks that the, that the cancer is being held by, you know, could be forget for um, wanting us to forgive things, not mm-hmm. to hold um, resentments. Um, and you know what? It, being ill is just a sign that you need to d- redirect your life. You know, it's a huge, it's a huge um, wake up call um, that we get so caught up in in everything that society wants us to do, and we're not even honoring ourselves. So, on that journey, it's just getting yourself to pay attention to yourself and to know that you are worth it and that you deserve to be well and healthy and that when you stand up for yourself, there's a whole bunch of people that will stand up for you as well. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, one of the facts is, you know, not everybody, you know, has, um, like a, a happy story at the end to tell, right? No. And no. and our our souls are each on their very own journey, and so we don't we don't know what that is, but we can still mm-hmm. keep progressing our lives as we go. Do you have any insight for anyone who, you know, is is maybe kind of facing that? Well, I would just like to say that um, every situation that happens in our life is for our own soul's evolution. And I saw, I heard something just recently, actually, um, um, from Agape, um, Agape Spiritual Center. I, I, I follow that program uh, every Sunday, and one of the reverends from there said, which kind of took me aback, but I understand it, and it said, even death is healing. And um, death is a very hard topic to um, talk about. However, um, part of our journey in, in, in this um, on earth was probably to have a cancer journey and to evolve and to um, evolve through that. And, um, you know, not everybody, as you said, Nikki, not everybody has a happy story. However, if you don't have, if you, if you do have a diagnosis, I would love for you to create a vision for yourself, a vision of how, a vision of the possibility of getting married, of, of getting better and what you would do beyond that. But also, what can you clear up? with family and friends or things that maybe have not worked out in the best, what can you do so that um, people can, you can leave here knowing that you did the best you could with what you had while you were here? I love that. And I think, you know, none of us know when our time is up. Mm -mm. None of us do. You know, it could be a freak accident or or we know that it's coming. Well, it is coming for all of us, whether we like it or not. Right. And and so our time is so precious and unrepeatable. And. I love just, I, you know, one of our programs has this, this tool to create a list of the 50 things, 50 goals that you would love to accomplish. And that was really hard <laughs> to do, but it, it got really fun. And, and now I have more than 50 things that yeah. I would love to achieve. And I, I, I would love, you know, to just offer that challenge to everybody to put, make that list of, of 50 things that you would absolutely love to do, whether it's a really, really tiny goal or, or something big, you know, whether it's zip lining or giving a Ted talk, you know, and I think that, that, that can, 
that can really like help us live the fullest that we can. And so we'll be right back with Patricia Yake. And I am Dr. Nikki Herrings. This is Evolve Wellness, and we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stick around. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Nikki Herrings. You're listening to Evolve Wellness, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we're here with our guest, Patricia Yake. And um, Patricia, we, we're, we're talking about, you know, just the different things that we can do um, to really step into uh, our um, our lives to, to keep progressing our soul's journey, regardless of, of the outcome. And I know that, you know, you have a powerful tool that you use with affirmations. And I would love to hear what some of the affirmations that you utilized on your journey. Yeah, well, I just wanted to, to remind people that um, because they are ill, it doesn't mean that they are a victim to their circumstances. And I have found that affirmations can be very powerful and they make you feel very, um, very expanded and can make you feel better. And a lot of this affirmation work I personally do in front of the mirror and just saying that I am, I am lovable. I am loving. I am deserving. I am well. I am capable. And just really saying a lot of the stuff to yourself and it's very, very empowering and um, it can lift your spirits. Um, and even just saying that um, I am well and I am not, I am not cancer. Cancer is not who you are. It is just something that you're going through, that you are greater than what you are going through. It is your body. It's not your soul that is going through it. And asking the questions of the universe, what can I do? What action can I take to help myself heal? Mm -hmm. And then writing down everything that comes into your mind for 20 minutes. And then taking action on the ones that feel the most vibrant to you and the things that you can do with what you have where you're at. And all anything that you can do, it doesn't mean that you have to spend, you know, a lot of money or a lot of stuff. There are things that will come up that won't cost anything. Yeah. And it could be just going into a coffee shop and sitting down and saying, can I join you and opening up a conversation with someone like happened with Nikki and I. <laughs> and we ended up being great supports for each other. 
because you know what? Everybody has a story and everybody loves to have someone listen to their story. And um, we are all, uh, we are all connected. And I think that there's no mistakes with, in the people that you come to that you do meet. Um, there's a resonance between people. And um, even if you're on this call, you know, you're meant to be here today. Mm -hmm. Um, and to be listening to this. Um, And uh, Nikki has shared with me that she's talked a lot about different tools for the cancer journey, and um, this is a really great program for you to be involved in. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I'm just so grateful to to have, to be surrounded by a community of people that, that, you know, we we surround ourselves by the people that we look up to and that we want to resonate with. And so, you know, surround yourself by the people that that really can allow you to feel seen and feel heard and uplift you regardless of, of what's going on. And um, even just moving your body might be something that shows up on that list from the universe, like getting outside, going for a walk, um, playing music and dancing around or, you know, and, and just, yeah, immersing yourself with, with support. I think that is one of the best things and it's, it can be hidden. Like you don't really know, it can just kind of show up out of the blue. If you just make it welcome, if you put yourself out there and make it welcome, because I think the tendency is for some, some of us to hole up and, and try to, to go it alone. Yeah. Yeah. And that was my experience where I I didn't have anybody with me on the weekends that um, I was, you know, down with chemo and um, I should have I should have had people with me um, because you can easily slip into depression. And um, I would, you know, if you can do something to prevent that for yourself, then, you know, I recommend that you do that. And another thing that just popped into my head is that no matter what treatment you're doing, drink lots of water. <laughs> it just, <laughs> the, um, yeah. the treatments, you know, do a wreck havoc on your body. And water is like a, a real healer for us because, you know, we're 75, 75 to 80% water. So we should really be drinking a lot of water while we're on that, on this journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. was, you know, it was so difficult for me to even eat, but like I had water constantly and I feel like mm-hmm. that was such a saving grace and knowing that I wanted to, you know, flush everything out, you know, the, it's in there while it needs to be, but you got to flush it out, <laughs> flush everything yeah, out exactly. there that you don't need anymore. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And even even in a visualization, when you know you're drinking that water, it's flushing out the cancer cells. It's flushing out all of the stuff that you just don't want to have in your body. And that's kind of the mind work, right? That's the power of the mind. Absolutely. Or one, yeah. Or we we take a look at our mentor's um, story of having all the disease go into one spot and having it all removed from that one kidney, you know, so, you know, just really visualizing, you know, if you are in a chemo where they're the, um, they're making the tumor smaller, you know, uh, visualize that tumor getting smaller and smaller and smaller and, um, having your mind support the medicine that is doing a job to get rid of that cancer. Yeah. Yeah, And imagine it being flushed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have to believe whatever course of treatment you choose, you have to believe that it's healing you. I think, yeah, you know, exactly. at, at first going into chemo, there's this tendency to be like, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, it, you think the worst things because it is this chemical thing and it feels so barbaric, but you have to really believe that it's doing what it needs to do so you can yeah. be well. And just having all these other tools to support it just, I believe, has this synergistic effect and and really, really 
is powerful and effective. And so we'll be right back with Patricia Yake. I'm Dr. Nikki Herrings. You're listening to Evolve Wellness, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners inventor and entrepreneur linda jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind the built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability, so they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com. Or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Nikki Herrings. This is Evolve Wellness, and we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we're wrapping things up here with our our guest, Patricia Yake, a fellow Life Mastery Consultant. And I know, you know, you never know who really can resonate for you as a coach. And I want to just invite people to lean into that. If you um, would love to talk to Patricia more, um, Patricia, how can they, how can people find you? And can you tell us a little bit about your coaching business? Yes. Um, um, people can find me at www.patriciayake.ca. And Yake is Y-A-K-E. Um, my coaching business is creating a vision for yourself, um, making a firm decision for what it is that you want, and then um, doing it outside of the fear. And I support you in um, all of these tools and creating a life that you would absolutely love living and a vision for your cancer journey and beyond. If you're interested in a free discovery session, please email me at Patricia Yake at Patricia Yake dot com. Wonderful. Wonderful. And then are there any last like closing notes that you have or book recommendations or anything like that just to to bring it home? I would just like to say that you are more powerful than you realize and that you um, have the power to make your life the best it can be um, 
for as long as you are here. And um, I wish everyone well and um, that you do what is best for you on this journey um, that is really transformative. I love it. Wonderful. Thank you so, so very much. <laughs> it's just been a privilege. You're welcome. To- have this conversation with you and share it with our listeners. And if you got want, if anyone wants any more information about the services I provide, you're welcome to check it out on evolvewellness.org. And um, yeah, we just there are just so many tools out there. And keep mm-hmm. doing the research, keep finding the support. And even if you just need a little guidance to find that particular support, reach out to Patricia or I like Mm -hmm. however we can guide you because it is a limited pool of the people who really put information out there on and even the strangest little things different you know side effects of chemo or whatever so I think it is important to to reach out for support and know that that we like are honestly here for that purpose Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and she mentioned the Bernie Siegel book again, and I know I, I mention it quite often on these shows, but it really, really is a powerful tool, and he offers so many guided meditations even in his book, and he also on Audible has a guided meditations CD that is really powerful and takes you on all of these journeys. And so, if you're just curious about what that is, even anybody can you can hop on there and. And listen and even just get some ideas uh, or create your own vision because it is such a powerful tool. Yeah. All right. I think that's it for today, everybody. Thank you. And again, thank you, Patricia. Really appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to talking to everybody again next week. I'm your host, Dr. Nikki Herrings. You're listening to Evolve Wellness, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll see you next week. You've been listening to Evolve Wellness with host Dr. Nikki Herrings. Listen each week as Dr. Nikki shares learnings from her own health challenges and interviews leaders making profound positive changes in their lives and communities right here on Dr. Nikki's Evolve Wellness. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.